the marvelous sage today hmm, uh, we will talk about three uh, very important incidents and actually the discourses of the supreme buddha he gave to the bhantis and actually we come to the third chapter of the book the last chapter of the book marvelous sage the acharya manusso uh, we are going to start the third one to about the marvelous hmm, dispensation of the supreme buddha maybe you know that the buddha's understanding the buddha's realization the buddha's wisdom is immeasurable and then it is um, similar only to a supreme buddha not to anyone else in the universe in the three worlds so the buddha's understanding is infinite immeasurable no one can see but the supreme buddha preached us that we need to understand the noble truths to to be free from the suffering in the samsara that's it what he was taught and that's the understanding even if the buddha understood everything about this life everything about this world everything about the universe he did not try to preach that all understanding to us to the bhantes to the world to the devas to the humans because that's not relevant to us which means the buddha knew that we that what we need that what we want to understand to be free from suffering that's the discourse that we will talk about a little bit today if you know the name of this sutta that the buddha understood everything about the world but he preached something that we needed you know the name of the sutta we are going to talk about today anybody else this is the sutta that we talk sim sapa sim sapa sutta sim sapa is a beautiful flower actually in the um, tropical countries you can see this flower uh, it is like a jasmine very good fragrance it has but in india they call the rosewood i'm not sure in singhala we call in singhala we call uh, atteria atteria okay atteria i'm not sure how about uh, linda in your language if you have any idea about this flower it's it's so good and it's so beautiful oh sorry vante it looks like jasmine we call melati 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 yeah bunga melati yeah okay yeah it's it's kind of a jasmine uh, and it's uh, it the smell is like lime and a little bit like uh, uh, the citrus smell it has it's very good feeling 
Anyways, the sutta's name is Simsapa. Acteria, being in the Simsapa forest, the Buddha gave this uh, the beautiful Dhamma talk. The first opportunity goes to Dehan Buddha. Yes, On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Kholsam B in the Simsapa Grove. Then the Blessed One took up a few Simsapa leaves in his hand and addressed the bhikkhus thus. Sadhu, sadhu. So, did you understand that? The Buddha took some uh, Simsapa leaves into his hand and said, Agasidu, your chance is next. Okay. What do you think Bikahas, which is more numerous, these few Simsapa leaves that, that I have taken up in my hands or those in the Simsapa grow grew overhead sad, sad. did you did you understand the question he took a handful of leaves into his hand and questioned dear because dear monks which is more the amount in my hand or the all the amount in the sin sapa forest which is more that was the question okay Sayara what about you? You're reading. So if you remember the picture that you see on my screen, that is from the Tere Tere Gatha in the single translation. So by our teacher Bhante, Pinot Lukaswami Nansi. The picture is beautiful. Drew by, I think, the artist Bandula Harish Chandra. He's an amazing artist. So that was the exact picture you see. See, the Buddha's hand is filled with Sinsapa leaves. And he had the Venerable Bhante's Venerable Sariputta Arahant Bhante, Venerable Mahamuggalan Arahant Bhante, and all the other Bhantes. It's a beautiful scenario. So see in the forest. Okay. Say Aradu. Venerable Sir. The Simsapa leaves that the Blessed One has taken up in his hand are few, but those in the Simsapa grove overhead are numerous. Sadhu, sadhu. The Bhantes replied, yes, Bhante, that you have in your hand is a little bit, but the Simsapa forest is huge, immeasurable. You cannot measure. That was the answer. Did you get the answer of the Bhantes? Yes, the Bhante, the, the Supreme Buddha's hand, you have a little bit of Simsapa leaves, rosewood leaves, but the entire forest is huge. Subodha. So to Bhikkhus, the, thing the things I directly know but have not taught you are numerous, while the things I have taught you are few. Yes, Subodha. Did you understand the meaning of this? Uh, of this, how do you explain that to the class? Uh, so the Buddha is saying that, uh, like the Buddha has only a bit of simsapa leaves in his hand. That is like the amount the Buddha has taught the bhikkhus. Mm -hmm. But like the simsapa grove, that is the amount that the Buddha has not taught the bhikkhus. Okay. Yes, you're right. And then the Buddha's teachings, understanding is like the Sinsapa, Sinsapa Grove, the entire Sinsapa Forest. But he gave us like the leaves that in his hand. It's a little bit. Do you know why? Why Buddha did that kind of a thing? Okay, can you only do, yes, Kasun, uh, Kasun and Laura, yes. The next opportunity goes to you. So Kev Kevin and Laura. And why because have I not told those many things? Because they are unbeneficial, unrelated to the essentials of the holy life. 
and do not lead to rev revolution to this passion to cessation to peace to direct direct knowledge to enlightenment to nibbana therefore i have not taught them sadhu sadhu so i give this chance to minu paputa to explain why why buddha did not preach that much of under, understanding that he got but not to the bandes um what i was saying previously was the buddha has the a vast amount of knowledge but the thing is the buddha only preaches what's beneficial towards uh towards like uh, ending suffering so teaching about like the four noble truths the noble eightfold path and anything that's related to ending this whole mass of uh, suffering so because of that the buddha doesn't have a need to teach the other knowledge is that the buddha has sadhu sadhu you're right you're right everybody understand right but he explained yes even though he had that vast understanding the wisdom the realization he did not preach all he preached what we needed for the nibbana for the uh, for the understanding for the releasement of the suffering that's it something very very beautiful huh yeah okay we we will go further more what about peter peter um, how are you doing actually how are you your mom is doing good too thank you thank you good yes peter and what bhikkhus have i taught i have taught this is suffering i have taught this is the origin of suffering i have taught this is the cessation of suffering i have taught this is the way leading to the cessation of suffering yes that's what he preached that's the only thing that he preached because that's the only thing that we need that we need to be free from suffering the buddha knew all about the world all about the universe all about the all beings in the universe but he did not preach remember once venerable ananda bhante asked how much far how far that the blessed one can speak but three times two times he did not answer the buddha did not give a, a certain answer to the venerable ananda bhante but for the third time when ban ananda bhante questioned he explained about his ability to talk to the universe which is like um, we cannot even think about but uh, at the end of the uh, explanation about his understand he said venerable ananda even if i want if i want i can talk further more too no he but he did not explain about that too because that is not relevant to the destruction of suffering to us we need that uh, a certain part to understand and to make our mind uh, faithful in the supreme buddha that's what we need this buddha's understanding is amazing immeasurable infinite something like that we want to be very happy and make our mind faithful about the understanding of the supreme buddha okay hey sali do you coming from again sri lanka um no i live in canada okay oh you come to the monastery too huh hey my swami wants it okay but okay yes your chance to read and why be to Uh, because, because, uh, because, have I taught this? Because this is beneficial, re re relevant to the fundamental, fundamental, 
fundamentals. Fundamentals of the holy life and leads to revolution, to dispassion, to sensation, to peace, to direct knowledge, to enlightenment, to nirvana. Therefore, I have taught this. Sadhu, sadhu. Beautiful reading. But that's why the Supreme Buddha preached the Four Noble Truths, suffering, the origin of suffering and like that. Because that's what we needed. That's this. Just this. Okay. Tuing and Tinuli. Hey, that's why I want to say. Therefore, bhikkhus, therefore, bhikkhus an effort should be made to understand this is a suffering. An effort should be made to understand this is the origin of suffering. An effort should be made to understand this is the cessation of suffering. An effort should be made to understand this is the way leading to the cessation of suffering. Sad, sad, sad. Can you see the, uh, the, the three pictures above uh, on my slide uh, to Winidu? And can you explain these pictures if you remember? Uh, um, the first picture was when the Buddha saw a old man. And then the second one is when the Buddha saw, I think that's a sick man. man. And then the third one is when the Buddha saw a dead man. Excellent. What is it about? Suffering, huh? Yeah, it's when the Buddha first realized suffering. Yes, that was about the suffering. And actually he renounced to understand the suffering and to be free from suffering. And he found it. Yeah. That's why the Buddha preached to us to do that same thing. That's why at the end of the Simsapa Sutta, taking a handful of leaves, Simsapa leaves, Ateria leaves into hands, he said that this, this is what I give you. This is what I preach you. This is what I talk to you to understand the noble truths. That's why, because, because you should take an effort to me to understand this is suffering. This is the origin of suffering. Try hard. That's the, see, the, 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 the discourse is a beautiful thing like the beginning is beautiful, the middle is beautiful, the ending is beautiful. At the end of the sutta, see his advice? He gave a beautiful advice to the Bhantas. Try hard to understand. This is suffering. He explained about his understanding and he said that this is what I give. Even though I have understood everything, I do not preach to you. I preach this much. That's it I give you. So try hard to understand that. Do not try anything else. Such a beautiful thing, Linda. Anything that you can add to the discourse, uh, uh, to the explanation, Linda, about that? Uh, oh, sorry, Bante. No, I think that was beautifully explained, Bante. Mm -hmm. well, Bante. Mm -hmm. And then in Acharya Manusubhu, so the Buddha, uh, our Pinot Lokus Aminoanse explains about the, about the the understanding, realization about karma or karma or the action of the Supreme Buddha uh, related to the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta. Linda, you chance to read uh, that yes, part, the, the the beginning of the Sutta. Yes, okay. Bama. Chula Kamma Vipanga Sutta, the shorter discourse on analyzing Kamma. Subha asks a good question. This is as I heard from the Blessed One. Those days, the Buddha was living in the province of Savatthi in Jeta's Park at Anatta Pindika's monastery. Sad, sad. See, the, the Buddha is living in Jetavana Forest, Jetavana Forest Monastery. So the beautiful picture you see. Subodha, did you read? Uh, then the Brahmin youth Subha told his son approached the Buddha and exchanged um, greetings with him. When the greetings and polite conversation were over, he sat down to one side and asked the Buddha, 
What is the cause, Master Goldman? What is the reason why among people, some are seen to be low and some are seen to be great? That the question is clear, right? Why some people are good and some people are bad. Some people are rich, poor. Dinu. Hey, my son, sir. This is what the Buddha explains, actually. Hey, my son, sir. Some are short-lived and some are long-lived. Constantly sick and healthy. Ugly and beautiful. Weak and influential. Poor and rich. From low caste and high caste. Unwise and wise. What is the reason why among people, some are seen to be low and great? Sadu, sadu. So the question is clear, right? And the answer is... The, the question is very clear. Why? Some people are rich. Some people are beautiful. Some people are influential and high caste and wise. Why? What's, the, what's this different? Dinu Buddha, do you remember this picture? We, we often talk about this picture. Yeah, my son. So who, is I seeing it. Who, is, who is in the picture? Um, is it the Buddha? Hmm? Is it the Buddha Shansa or God Saka? Uh, not God Saka. It was the Buddha in a past life as a god. Yes. Do you remember the name? Before coming to the human world, he lived Santa Sita. Santa Sita. Santa Sita Diviraja. He's the king of the, the Tusita heaven, the fourth heavenly world. And he received the invitation of the devas to come to the human world, to become the Buddha. See, that's a beautiful picture. He had everything in the, in the heavenly world, right? Beauty, the glorious picture, and, the, the, and everything rich, high caste. Why? What's the difference? The answer of the Supreme Buddha, Kemi. Uh, dear you, beings are the owners of their come, and here to their come. Come is their determining, determining factor of rebirth, their relative and their refuge, which is come that divides beings into low and great. Oh, this, this is not the full explanation. This is what he said about the, about the difference between good and bad of the people. Did you get the answer, Sandish? What is why some people are rich, why some people are poor? Sandish? It might be not trying to answer. What's the answer? Um, the answer is um the comma divides beings into low and great um castes. Very good, very good. Comma. That's the understanding, the vast understanding of the Supreme Buddha. It's amazing, huh? Kama has a huge role in our life. The Buddha understood and he gave that Dhamma. Okay, that's from the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta. Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, the analysis of the Kama by the Supreme Buddha. Okay, Sandish, your chance next um, to read. We actually go to a um, beautiful story. Hmm? This is what happened after the, let me think about it. Hmm. Remember after, hmm, after the ordination of the 60 bantes, 60 arahan months, they went uh, to the faraway countries to share the Dhamma. And after that, Buddha is going to Uruvela. Uruvela to teach Uruvela Kassapa, Nadi Kassapa, Gaya Kassapa, right? On the way, there was something really beautiful happened. We will talk about that Sunday we are reading next. Hey, this, my is, this is what happened on the way. When the Buddha had stayed at Benares for a, as long as he liked, he set out wandering toward, toward Uruvela. At a certain point, he left the road. 
entered a forest grove and sat down at the foot of a tree. So remember Benares? Benares is where he preached uh, Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Sutta, Anatma Lakkana Sutta, actually to the Sata Gira Hemavata Sutta, remember? And after that, he gave Dhamma to Yasabante and he became Arahan and all the other 60 Arahan Bhantas. They went for sharing the Dhamma in the world. Now he is coming to Uruvele. And this happens. Story of the 30 big fools from Paveya. Oh, Paveya. Paveya is a country. And actually there is a forest too. In that forest, this, this happens. Chamudi. We'll see what happened actually in the forest. Just then, a fine group of 30 friends and their wives were enjoying themselves in that forest grove. Because one of them did not have a wife, they had given him a prospect. Stitu. Sadhu, sadhu. So, remember, they are the 30 um, princes, actually. They are from the Paweyaka country, and they had an idea to enjoy the, maybe... Um, what do you call it? Um, camping or something? Like they go for swimming, they go for playing, maybe singing, dancing, swimming in the rivers or something. But they, they, that was a people with 30 princes. But one prince did not have a girlfriend from the king's palace. Like they have, they have the plans to marry maybe. But one prince did not have a princess. So they hired a woman. Now they were enjoying in the forest. Maybe playing, um, hunting, killing. Sometimes, uh, I don't know. Maybe we can think about it. And then making barbecues sometimes. Huh? And they jumped into the water to swim, to play water games or something. Now, the Buddha is coming. They are really fortunate people, but they do not know about them. Just playing. Just enjoying their lives. But they came to this world to become Arahan, to stop their journey in the samsara. They did not know. Now they are blind, still blind. Play. See what happens. Um... Chance goes to Minuba. This is what happens. While they were all carelessly enjoying themselves, that prostitute took that man's possessions and ran away. To help their friend, they all went searching for that woman. Okay, what happens? That woman that they hired was not a good person. He, she is a thief. She stole all the ornaments, all the maybe gold, maybe gems, maybe their you know, valuable um, clothing and everything. When they jumped into the river, they, they, this thief stole everything and ran away. Now, these 30 princes, 30 princes, did you see the picture? These princes, they were like, oh, now they can go home. They can go to the um, palaces because their fathers and parents, they question, what, where did you go? What happened to your own most valuable things? Right? And then they started in search of... Uh, this woman to find out to take the valuable things from them okay the, while they were running here and there in the forest buddha was sitting ravin putta you chance is next this is what happens as fortunate people 
Ravi in the silver. Oh, okay. Um, and as they walked about that forest grove, they saw the Buddha seed at the foot of a tree. They approached him and said, Sir, have you by any chance seen a woman by yourself, by herself? Did you, did you, did you understand that? So that, that's what they needed. That's what they wanted to find out the woman who were running away, stealing things. So the, they questioned the Buddha to the right person they came and questioned, Sir, have you by ch any chance seen a woman by herself? Running away this way? They came to the Buddha. Fortunately, the Buddha out of compassion went to that forest. Anyways, Senile. Senile's camera is not on today. And my song on, sir. Why not? Uh, you want me to read Dante? Yeah, the next part, okay? Mm. Okay. But young man, what use is a woman to you? They told him what had happened. What do you think is a better for you? That you search for a woman or that you search for yourselves? It's better for us to search for ourselves. Well then, sit down and I'll give you a teaching. Saying, yes sir, those friends bowed to the Buddha and sat down. Peter, can you talk about this uh, conversation, the beautiful conversation, the Buddha questions, mm, which is important. Peter, how, how do you enjoy that part actually? It's, it's quite deep, but when he's saying just, it's better to search for yourselves, I, I suppose it means better to search within yourselves for like um, insight and wisdom, maybe. Yeah, yeah, which is better in search of yourself or someone else. That was the perfect question by the Supreme Buddha for the princess. All of a sudden, they sat down to listen to something precious. Gauridu, your chance to read. The Buddha then gave them a progressive teaching, Samukhan Sikha mode of preaching. Talk on generosity, talk on virtue, talk on rebirth in heaven, talk on the suffering of sensual pleasures, talk on the filth of life with defilements, and talk on the benefits of renunciation. Sad, sad, sad. Good reading. Remember, Samukkansika mode of preaching, Samukkansika desana, that was very special to the Supreme Buddha. So the Buddha knew that the, the minds of the people are not ready to listen to the Dhamma. So he had a gradual explanation about things that happens to these 30 princesses, actually, princess. um, actually um, uh, they are called Baddhavagya princess. Baddhavagya. Baddha is beauty. So they, are, they were really beautiful. They were listening to the Buddha, right? They are not ready to listen to the Dhamma. So the Buddha explain, explain the things about generosity, the virtuous behavior, being born in a they will be in the safety. Nelit. Um, when the Buddha knew that their mind was ready without hindrances, joyful and confident, he revealed the teaching root to the Buddhas, suffering its origin, its end and path. Good. Mm -hmm. So when when they were when when their minds were ready. The Buddha gave the suffering, its origin, the Four Noble Truths. He preached the Four Noble Truths. When they listen to the Four Noble Truths, actually what happens? They were lucky, huh? Doing. Hey, my sons. And just as a clean and stainless cloth absorbs dye properly, so too, while they were sitting right there, they experienced the stainless vision of the truth. Anything that has a beginning has an end. 
Sadu, sadu. So like, it's, it's a beautiful simile you made this before, right? It's like a clean white cloth with dye. Really absorbs that uh, dye really well. They understood the noble truths, the real Dhamma from the Supreme Buddha. Really good, huh? See the luckiest people in the world. They were the luckiest people. Even though they have everything in their palaces, like beautiful princes, now they are, they are going to the palaces. They are listening to the Supreme Buddha. They were looking for a woman in the forest in search of their ornaments. Now they do not forget about anything about the palace, about their ornaments, about their clothes. Just listening to the Supreme Buddha, the marvelous Dhamma. They were lucky, huh? They were not. He Sali Pereira. You chance to read. See, they became monks. They had seen the truth and reached, understood, and honey penetrated it. They had gone beyond doubt and uncertainty and had attended to confidence and had uh, become independent of others in the teacher's instruction. Some, some words are um, a little bit heavy put there, but don't worry about that which means like they really understood the dumb gave by the Supreme Buddha. They are the, now they, 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 their minds is free. The minds are free. Okay. So the Buddha gave a perfect dumb tone. Maybe Kamit. And they said to the Buddha, Honorable Sir, we wish to receive the going forth in your presence. We wish to receive the full ordination. The Buddha said, Come, monks, the teaching is well proclaimed. Practice the end, practice the spiritual life to make a complete end of the suffering. And that was the full ordination of those venerable monks. Uh, so they, they were really lucky, huh? So uh, when they ask the ordination from the Buddha, Buddha says, come monks, this Dhamma is well proclaimed. What is this called, um, Kemit? This mode of uh, ordination is called? Ehibhikkhu Pabbhaja. Sadhu Sadhu. Ehibhikkhu Pabbhaja or Ehibhikkhu ordination. Very good. Ehi means come. Bhikkhu means the monk. Come monks, come monk, if it is a one monk. Very good. Linda's chances next. So they, they became Arahant actually. Now they are going away with the Supreme Buddha. Avasaramante. Uh -huh. Taking upon themselves the 13 pure practices, they return after a long time to the Buddha. Hearken to his discourse on the begin, be, beginningless and before leaving their seats, attain arahanship. Psalms. A little bit more, Linda. Um, how do you feel this uh, beautiful discourse? So they were princes from the king's palace. Now they are living with the Supreme Buddha as Arahan monks. Their journey really, see, it was a huge turning point in their lives. They came from the palace to go to the palace back, but something really happened. It's really different. How do you feel this? I, Bhante, I think it's really extraordinary how, um, uh, I think in a way, Supreme Buddha also with um, the Indriya Pariyotanyana, I think, to see their faculties, their spiritual faculties. And 
I think Supreme Buddha thought that they were ready to receive these uh, blessings and to um, walk this um, um, spiritual path um, and to be ordained. Yes, Bama thing. Yes, absolutely. See, um, the lucky people, huh? Very fortunate. Very blessed, yes, Bhante. Mm. Very blessed. Amazing. Okay, this is the end of the um, Paveyaka story, Paveyaka, the, the Baddhava. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, what are the 13 pure practices? Excuse me, Bhante? What are the 13 pure practices? 13 pure practice. Uh, where did you get this? Just before someone. Um, 13 pure practice. Let me see. 13 pure practices. Ah, oh, 13 pure practices. Okay, let me explain. This is the uh, the austere practices, Pute, especially for the Bhantes. Sometimes the Bhantes live in, in the in, in outside, they not they do not come to the shelters. Or maybe they live with the three robes, not to go to the fourth one. They eat in the bowl, not anywhere else. They eat one meal, not two meals, or not anything else in the day. Likewise, you have 13, uh, they are called uh, uh, in, uh, in Sinhala Dutang and Pali also Dutang. 13 Dutangas, austere practices, or maybe extreme practices. Some Bhantes live only in the cemetery, not in the Vasana season. They come back. Uh, and then, likewise, some, some Bhantes go um, only on Pindapata, asking for food, not receiving the food that the people bring or something like that. There are 13 uh, austere practices. They did that too. Thank you for, uh, for the question, Kenneth. Okay, our next chapter in the marvelous sage, the Acharya Manaso, is this. The marvelous dispensation. Okay, first part in that ma marvelous uh, dispensation goes to Dhyanadu to read. Going forth and full ordination. Soon afterwards, the monks were bringing back the various dis distracts to uh, countries, people desiring to go forth and desiring the full ordination thinking. The Buddha will do it. The monks become, became tired, as did those seeking the going forth and the full ordination. Sorry, sorry. Did you get it? So yes. now, yes, but then now we have many, many Arahant Bandes in the world. After the 60 Arahant Bands, now we have 30 months more, and maybe more and more and more. Now, they go here and there to preach Dhamma. And in those areas, people like to become uh, the monks in the dispensation. So what happened was, all the monks, they bring the people to the Supreme Buddha from far away villages, from far away countries, far away cities. It was a huge journey, tiring. Sometimes uh, hundreds of miles away. They come to the Supreme Buddha for the ordination. It's tiring. It's hard. Huh? So out of compassion. So the Buddha, Buddha, Buddha gave a beautiful method to give them uh, the ordination. Next chance goes to, okay, uh, Ramutudu. We may as well once. You, this is what you have. While he was in seclusion, the Buddha reflected on this, and he thought, why don't I allow the monks to give the going 
court and the full ordination in those various districts and countries. Mm -hmm. Five. Okay. And then uh, next is um, uh, Imasha and Shiva. Okay. Your chance next. In the evening, the Buddha came out from seclusion, gave a teaching, and told the monks what he had thought, adding, I allow you to give the going forth and the full ordination in those various districts and countries. I understand. So the Buddha, Buddha gave the permission to the Bantes to give their ordination in the same area, in the same countries, in the same cities, not to take Every, everybody to the Supreme Buddha. That was beautiful, huh? Okay, Tehan Buddha. Tehan Buddha is listening to me. And the monk should be done. First, the candidate should. should yeah. Yeah. Off his hair and beard and put on yellow robes. He should then put his upper robe over his one shoulder, pay respect at the feet of the monks, go on his heels, and rise his joint palms. He should then we told to say this. Okay, sad, sad. Beautiful reading. This is picture of uh, ordination of uh, Upasaka child, okay? And then shave. They, first they shave head and they they wear the yellow robes. You have three, you, you are given three robes. The upper robe, the inner robe, and double cord robe. You will get a ball for arms food too at the moment you get the ordination. Anybody who likes to become monks? No? Okay, Peter. You receive the blessings of the noble triple gain, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. This is what you want to say when you get your ordination, Peter. I go for refuge to the Supreme Buddha. I go for refuge to the Supreme Dharma. I go for refuge to the Supreme Sangha. For the second time, I go for refuge to the Supreme Buddha. For the second time, I go for refuge to the Supreme Dharma. For the second time, I go for refuge to the Supreme Sangha. For the third time, I go for refuge to the Supreme Buddha. For the third time, I go for refuge to the Supreme Dharma. For the third time, I go for refuge to the Supreme Sangha. You should give the going forth and the full ordination for the taking of the three refuges. That's what you want to say when you get your ordination. Uh, Rana Hasputa, do you know to chant this in Pali actually? How do you say I go for refuge to the Supreme Buddha and everything? In Pali, your chance. Um, I actually don't know. You have no idea. No, I have no idea. Okay. Um, I, no, I give this chance to Dioni. That's okay, Puti. To say this in Pali. Oh, um. Maybe, maybe chance goes to, okay, Senon, you're hidden today. Amen, Sarnansa. I go for refuge to the Supreme Buddha. I, I go it. for refuge. Yes, but I need it in Pali. Um, I forgot how to say it. How do you do this? Swamaji, each piece of Sangang Saranangachami, Sangang Saranangachami, 
Dutiam pi budang saranang gacami. Dutiam pi damang saranang gacami. Dutiam pi sanggang saranang gacami. Tatiam pi budang saranang gacami. Tatiam pi damang saranang gacami. Tatiam pi sanggang saranang gacami. Sadu, sadu, sadu. You are very good. Okay, Pute. This is how the Buddha recommended to give uh, the ordination to the Bhantes who lived in faraway countries. Even today, uh, you want to chant uh, Buddha Sarnam. I go for refuge to the Supreme Buddha when you get your ordination. This is what we learned today from the marvelous sage, the Acharya Mama, so from the book. Remember, the first discourse we talked today was Sim Sapa Sutta, the Sutta who uh, the, the Buddha preached in the forest of Acteria. That was about the wisdom and the knowledge and the realization of the Supreme Buddha. And then we talked about the 30 bhikkhus, Pavayika, or something else. Yes, we, we talked about the uh, Pavayika and then about the giving the ordination uh, from the faraway villages. Think about what we learn about the Supreme Buddha, his wisdom, about the dispensation. This is not something simple, Buddha. This is not what we hear every day. This is not uh, something uh, that we normally listen, normally learn. This is extraordinary. This is something uh, beyond this world, actually. This helps us to be free from suffering. The Buddha, Dhamma, and Hindu, the Sangha, and then the pure teaching, uh, and everything we see, we learn. And then we make good merits by learning this, uh, these beautiful things, and uh, we develop our mindfulness too. We collect good merits. And this merit is very, very powerful for us to give the chance to be free from suffering in the sense. So today also we had a nice conversation, nice uh, explanation, nice readings by the, uh, the beautiful people we have today. And we have collected, uh, collected uh, a good merit, very powerful. And we are happy to share this good merit with the with our uh, teacher Bhante Pinwatha Kusami Nase first. May this merit be very helpful to our Pinwatha Kusami Nase to, uh, to complete the Four Noble Truths, understanding the Four Noble Truths very soon in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu.